Namaste. Well, uh, you and I haven't been talking uh, this week because uh, I've been very busy. Uh, it's the last week of the academic year before summer starts, and uh, our school hosted an international conference on Dorothy Day. And so I've been busy um, filming, or not filming, but taking pictures and documenting, and uh, but also transportation. But more than anything else, I've been busy just going there, appreciating it, and being blown away by uh, the quality of the presentations and, uh, more importantly, the quality of the of the participants. And so, um, you know, I, I feel like uh, a conference on Dorothy Day fits with uh, some of the goals of the Parliament of the World's Religions. You know, Dorothy Day um, had a clear vision. Um, you know, one of our goals in the Parliament is to talk about distribution of, uh, of wealth, of uh, economies and um, justice, economic justice. And uh, Dorothy Day uh, started the Catholic, was one of the two uh, founders of the Catholic Workers Movement and uh, was very much involved. Uh, she started off as a, as a communist before she had a conversion to Catholicism. Uh, but maintained her alliance uh, with uh, with the poor, and saw that as extremely consistent with uh, the fundamental values of the of the Catholic Church. And so there was that. The other part is that uh, she was anti-war her her whole life, and um, you know uh, protested uh, all types of of violence and and all different wars. And uh, and then the last part was that uh, you know she. Uh, also supported women's rights, which is also consistent with uh, the current 2015 uh, Parliament of the World's Religions that's going to be focusing on um, the, the gifts that women bring to uh, the faith communities all over the world. So it was a, a really good conference, um, and it was a diverse conference because the presenters, uh, some of them were very much academics and uh, were the premier experts in the world on uh, Dorothy Day, um, her um, compatriots, and um, the workers' movement, whether it happened to be hospitality houses in the city or uh, the uh, urban uh, universities or, or uh, workers' farms. And so, uh, you know, they had the, the traditional speakers that you would have at a uh, conference. But the other speakers were the ones who um, weren't academics. They they come they were in two categories, either the folks who were the activists who actually lived the experience, who were in um, Catholic workers' homes or houses, hospitality houses, or the farms, or the other group was those who who knew uh, uh, Dorothy Day, and and that was just fascinating. Uh, including one of the plenary speakers was uh, Dorothy Day's uh, granddaughter. And so um, it was very, very moving. And uh, and in between, we, we worshipped uh, a lot together. And uh, then there was also the, the camaraderie, the breaking of bread, the, the, the sharing my campus with them, which I always love to do. I, uh, I think of myself as a, as a tour guide. And, um, you know, well, we had uh, the, the mass the last night. Uh, there were two archbishops. And there was uh, uh, two bishops and priests and deacons and altar uh, uh, attendants and incense and a full choir and it was just beautiful at the cathedral and it was just I mean it was really really moving the homily was great and then uh, we went to the performing arts center and heard uh, a talk on Dorothy Day by Archbishop uh, Gomez who is the Archbishop of Los Angeles. Uh, the largest Catholic diocese in America. Uh, there are five million uh, Catholics in his diocese. The next, the closest one next to that is New York with two million. Uh, there are uh, masses said in 40 different languages in the diocese of Los Angeles every day. And so uh, this is an important man who came here to talk about Dorothy Day, not because uh, he was moved by her commitment to workers and immigration and uh, diversity, which all that's true, but because he was really moved by her spirituality. And so it was good to, to hear about this woman who's being considered for sainthood, who um, early in her life had, had uh, lived in lovers, had had an abortion, uh, had hung with communists, and, uh, and then... Um, became this devoutly religious person 
who still spent the rest of her life working with the poor, living with the poor. Uh, and so it was a life that was not glamorous. It was sort of Sister uh, Mother Teresa before Mother Teresa. And so uh, I'm always moved by her. Uh, but it was also good to see young folks who were living in hospitality houses because I just have a number of friends who, who do that. And I found myself uh, really drawn to intentional faith communities that are ecumenical, inclusive, uh, but also um, intentional faith communities that are dedicated to working with the poor. I, I like that a lot. So that's what I've been doing. It's been a phenomenal week. I've absolutely loved it. Uh, it was the perfect way to end the academic year, and I look forward to uh, seeing and interacting uh, with uh, more of these Catholic workers uh, and the academic uh, academicians after um, after we get a little break and uh, and life goes on. So it was good, and uh, talk to you later. Take care. Namaste.